So that's the point of this, right. this chapter, that he is Ben David. Ben means son. He is the son of David, Talk heir about Jesus. to the throne. Lord, let me Shalom. I'm Billy Brim. This is my daughter Shelly. And we're here at Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks. And this is the prophetic witness. The Lord called me to a witness ministry, Shelly. Yes, but and He gave you the eyes for it. He gave me eyes and Eastern eyes to see. And He was so gracious when your father passed away. And I prayed about what to do. Uh, we were young. I was only, what, 40? He was you were 49. In the 40s. I was 47. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, go to Hebrew, go to Israel and study. I want you to go to Israel and study Hebrew in the land. Well, my daughter said, I said, I'm good. I enrolled in this school and told my daughter, I'm going to Brenda. She kept the monies. And you were living in Oklahoma. And we were living in Oklahoma. And I said, I need to go and spend the summer at these classes. In Israel. In Israel. And she said, well, you better take a look at the books and see if you've got the money to spend the summer in Oklahoma City. <laughs> so... Uh, from there and on, it, he just used it to... He gave you light. He mother. gave me light. He enlightened me. He said, go to Israel, learn the la language. Study Hebrew. Study Hebrew. And he said, but anyway... And um, here we are. I learned uh, just a little Hebrew I know. Mm -hmm. It throws such a light on the scriptures. And we've been going, you'll do the best with this if you go back on all those ways you can go back these days and get the preceding broadcast. There are already mm -hmm. four. This is the fifth. And we are going to go on with other words Good. and other Good. light from the Hebrew. Uh, but today we're going to look at the Hebrew light, the light of the Hebrew language on the book of Matthew, New mm. Testament. It's not just the Old Testament that the Hebrew will turn uh, light upon, the Hebrew language, but the new. And we looked in a little bit of detail, not a big one, but a little detail in the book of Revelation, the last two sessions. But now, what I got today, I got from an angry rabbi. I mean, he was angry. Uh-oh. And this is early on. When I first started going to Israel, oh my goodness, 1986. Now we have Christians United for Israel. It's all different. kinds of things. It's different, but it was tough back then. They didn't trust us, and I don't blame oh, them. Oh, exactly. Because all the things that had been done to them... You're talking and about the Jews. The Jews, yes. the Holocaust, the, um, the Tsarist Every, oh. Russia, the uh, Inquisition. Under the sign of the cross. Crusades. Yes. Every bit of it under the sign of the cross. So no wonder. So it was no wonder. And um, it was hard for us. Mm -hmm. And now, thank God, we have better relations. But at that time, this was an American rabbi. Mm -hmm. And I had met him while I was at Shulamit School, uh, Upon Akiva, and he was so mad. And he was mad about the scriptures. And he was <laughs> mad, angry about Matthew, the book of Matthew. And he said, see how they did this? See how they stole this? And I said, what? So he took the book of Matthew mm -hmm. in a New Testament where he got it, I don't know. <laughs> and he showed me uh, a verse in here. Okay. And he said, now, see what they've done? My mind. I said, no, I don't see what they did. And then he explained to me what they did. And when he explained to me what it means, oh, it threw the light on the scriptures. Sure. So in Genesis, excuse me, in Matthew, uh -huh. here we're going to see Matthew is the uh, apostle. He's the gospel writer that really takes the Old Testament prophecies and, and shows you their fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So he's particularly writing to the Jews, I think. Yes. And uh, yep. so this is called the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Yeshua, and that word, his name is salvation. Name him Yeshua because he's going to save his That's people right. from the sins. Mm -hmm. Yeshua, Hamashiach, the anointed one, the son of David. Uh -huh. So here we're going to prove all through this chapter that he is the son of David, 
And therefore, if he is son of David, then he's heir to the throne and all the prophecies about the throne wow. and about the son of David. Wow. So it's called, read the first verse, please. The first verse? <laughs> mm-hmm. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, Ben David, the son of Abraham. And then it says, Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob or Yaakov and Yaakov begat Judah and his brethren and Judah begat Phares and Para, Zara of Tamar. Tamar. Tamar, remember? Oh yeah, Tamar, the mm -hmm. date, the woman. Mm -hmm. And how would you pronounce that? Phares oh, begat Esrom and Esrom begat Aram and Aram begat Amenadab. And Amenadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Salom, Shal uh -huh. Salmon. and Salom, Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, Rahab. Mm -hmm. and Boaz begat Ovad of Ruth, and is the B a V there? And Ovad. It is in the Old Testament, but most Christians say Obed. Okay, mm -hmm. so you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Obed or Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David, David, the king, the king, the king, and David, the, the king. Now, in the uh, companion, it says this phrase, "the son of David," is an expression that occurs nine times in this book of Matthew, mm -hmm. and it's because the promise is directly to. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and 16, the house of David. The house of David. Yes, so that's the point of this, right. this chapter, that he is Ben David. Ben means son. He is the son of David, Talking heir about Jesus. to the throne, yes. Jesus. Now, then I'm going to skip all the way down, and it ends up with Joseph, the husband of Mary, and uh, this is the legal side, the father's side, the legal side. Okay. And so, now here's the verse he was so angry about. Wow. Read verse 17, please. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away of, unto Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto the Messiah or Christ are 14 generations. And so he says to me, you see what they did? Look at there, what they did. He had Eastern eyes to see. What well, did he and, see? And I said, uh, well, uh, explain it to me. Yeah. And he said, David, David, the gematria of David. Oh. Well, gematria, every, go back to Psalm 119. All right. Go back to Psalm 119. Every Hebrew letter is a number. That's a fact. That's a fact. And so you take a word like Yehovah, mm -hmm. the name of God, yod Hey vav Hey, it equals 26. Mm -hmm. That's the gematria of it. Words can be connected by their root words. They can be connected by their numbers. It's very marvelous, this Hebrew language. Very mathematical. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to take you down. Remember we said that Psalm 119 is an alphabet or alphabet psalm. That means it is very basic. It's the ABCs. Yes. So it's divided. It's the longest book in the Bible. And it's divided into eight verse sections. And each one of these words, if you had a Hebrew Bible, from one to eight, it would begin with Aleph. Mm. Aleph equals, now I have these written down in my Bible because each one of these is a number. So I'm going to give you the numbers if you want to write them in your Bible. Okay. Aleph is one, Bet two, Gimel three, Dalit four, He five, Vav six, Zain seven, Het eight, Tet nine, and then that little letter Yud the hand, 10. 10 fingers. 10. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to go to, we're going to move in increments of 10. Okay. Kaf is 20. 
Lamed is 30. Mem is 40. Noon is 50. Samoth is 60. Ein is 70. Pei is 80. Tzadik is 90. And then we move over to 100s. We go on from there. Now, let's go back to the beginning. He said, you see there what they tried to do? You see what they did? Uh -huh. I said, no, I don't see what they did. <laughs> he said, the generations from Abraham to David are 14. He said, what's the gematria of David? At that time, Shelley, I did not know what the letters were with the numbers. Okay. I did not know. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to show you. This is all new to you. Yeah, it's all new to me. I'm going to show you what he showed me. Okay. Here is the word for David. It is the letter, or here's how you say it in the Hebrew, David. David. And David uh, is, is David's name, and it, its meaning is beloved. Hmm. Beloved. Sweet. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. It's this very same way you write it. Hmm. Ani do di. It's so beautiful. Okay, so David or David. First letter is Dalit. Second letter is Vav. Third letter is Dalit. So, Dalit, it, it, it's, it's Dalit, and it is the number four. Vav is the number six. Now we got another Dalit, and again it's four. So if you add this up, four plus six is ten, plus four is fourteen. And this is the gematria of David's name, cool. the number fourteen. So he said, look what they've done here. They have tried to prove through the gematria that Jesus is the Messiah, the, well, the son of David, the Ben David, yes. the son of David, and he is. And you Hallelujah. think about that. Yes, That's and amazing. all the promises yes. for the kingdom are to the son of David. Right. So if you'll go back to Psalm 89. 89? Mm -hmm. Psalm 89. Here is a wonderful, oh, I start every day. Sometimes I miss, but I try. Shelly, to do every day my healing scriptures. That's why I'm never sick. Right. I wrote down last year as one of my things that I wanted for the next year to walk in divine health every day. Yes. So the other day I was checking it, and I did. I wasn't sick in bed a day. Mm -mm. Not in 2022 was I sick in bed a day. No. So I'm going to have that same thing in 2023. Absolutely. Write your own ticket. Uh, and so I read my healing scriptures. Mm -hmm. and it's I, medicine. I start them off with this. This is what... Uh, at the top of it, now we have this online, mm -hmm. and at the top of it, I say, God, my divine healing and health scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I start it with this verse, God's covenant promise to me. And I read then Psalm 89, and I've got it there in my Bible. Mm -hmm. Psalm 89, verse 34. Please read that. Okay, I'm going to have to turn the page. So bear with me just a little bit. And verse number 34 my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. God is a covenant-keeping God. If He said it, this is uh, oh, this is bringing it. Down. That's powerful. Do you know the same Hebrew word for thing is word? Uh huh. Yes. I will not alter the word that's gone out of, of my, my lips. lips. No. Devar, it's the same word. Mm -hmm. So this is a covenant, and it is particularly God's covenant with David. Right. This whole chapter. Yeah. So we're going to go back now, and we're going to read Psalm 89, 3 and 4, please, Shelley. Okay, verses 3 and 4 of the same chapter. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto... David, my servant, thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. So God has a covenant with David and David's seed. And he's going to give to David's seed a throne. And that rabbi was furious <laughs> because he said somebody has 
copied this down and they have tried to make this say that he's the seed of David and he's going to be on a throne. And if it bothered him, that means that he really... Well, I don't know, Shelly, but I, all the time he's telling me this, I'm thinking, wow. I know. Man, this is great. Yeah. I didn't know this. Thank you, Mr. Rabbi, for Absolutely. establishing me. You're changing my life, more angry firmly Rabbi. In, in my belief. Right. And you think about those people needing healing that's recorded in Matthew, and they drew upon the covenant phrase that they had a legal right to use Son of David, have mercy on, on me. me. And ben he, David. And he was obligated to stop what he was doing, Jesus, and say, Bring them to me. Yeah, the divine Barnabas. Based blind on I will beggars. not alter the thing that's come out of my no. mouth, the word. And he is the son. He is that that does establish. Yes. 14 generations, 14 yes. generations. Here you have it. Here's and the generation of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And one more thing. Three mm-hmm. is the number of completion. Mm-hmm. So three groups, three sets of 14 apiece mm-hmm. is completion. Mm-hmm. This divine. Thing, divine. Mm-hmm. Now, it, uh, here back into Psalm um, 89, which is, um, now it's going to speak of the seed. Oh, yeah. In verse 27, so this is going to be Jesus. Mm-hmm. In Psalm uh, 89, verse 27, 28, and 29, please. Okay, I'll have to turn the page. What verse? 27, 27 28, okay. and 29. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. I didn't look to see if that's Hesed. I'll have to find out. Find out, out. please. Mm -hmm. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. He made that covenant with him. And then verse 34, my covenant will I not break nor altered the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn in my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, as a faithful witness in heaven. Hallelujah. The witness in the sky the moon is faithful. Yes. You're never going to have a day a that you don't see the moon. You're never going to have a day that you don't see the sun. That's right. You might get cloudy, but it's oh, there. Oh, there was a full moon last night. It was beautiful. Mm, I didn't get to see it. Bless oh, the Lord. gorgeous. But yes, it so was a here, witness. So this, here, this right here, and Matthew knew this. Yes, he knew He it. knew the gematria of yes. David's name. And he knew 14 generations and 14 generations and 14 mm-hmm. generations. Now, there is a scripture in Luke which says that God's going to bring back the fig tree and we're to watch the fig tree, Israel. It's Luke 21. Mm -hmm. We're to watch Israel for signs of the times. Well, let's just turn over there. there. Yeah, let's just turn over to Luke 21. Those heavenly pages uh turning. And they said, what is the sign of your coming, your parousia, to set up your kingdom? Yeah, they asked him a question. And he, they're the disciples. Verse 29, he said, make to them a parable. Watch the fig tree, that's Israel, Mm -hmm. and all the trees, those are the scriptures, those are the nations, Israel's a nation, those other trees are nations, they are nations, the prophets prophesied where they would be in the end days. For instance, where would Iraq be? Babylon. Where would Iran be? Persia. Where would Russia be? Right. Ezekiel 38, 39. Specifically the nations of prophecy. Watch those nations of prophecy and watch Israel. When they shoot forth, that means into their prophetic place, right. you see and know of your own self, summer is nigh at hand. That means uh, the time of harvest, the time of the judging the summer crop. So likewise, Daniel chapter 2, so likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know you that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. This is talking about the visible kingdom that the son of David, Ben David, is going to set up on the earth. Mm-hmm. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Mm. So people are always trying to figure out how long is a generation. And I remember one time when everybody had it all figured out. Jesus was going to come in 88, 1988. They had everything all filled out. uh, So many generations. And they used the number 40 for generation. Where'd that come from? 
that's a New Testament. That's our time of generations. Mm -hmm. These generations were very much longer. Right. And he said it's an it was a generation. Well, think of Abraham. How from old Abraham was. to David are fourteen generations. Right. They live long lives. Right. From Abraham's time, got shorter and shorter. But from that time, a generation, what is a generation? A man's lifetime. A man's right. lifetime. So the generation that is on the earth when Israel's restored, when it comes back to being a nation, when it gets back to Jerusalem, that generation is not going to pass away until all things, Being until fulfilled. all oh, things right. are fulfilled mm -hmm. and he's going to set up his kingdom. Yes. So there could be people like me, for instance, who were alive on this earth in 1948. The modern state when, of Israel. When the modern state of Israel was born, alive on this earth in 1967. Mm -hmm. got when back they Jerusalem. got back to Jerusalem. Alive on this earth right now to see these nations come into their political, mm -hmm. their places, Russia, Iran, Persia, to see them come into their places. They're awakened. They're, they're in their places, Shelley. Yes. That generation it's not going to pass away till all is fulfilled. All means he comes back, he sets his feet down. He first he takes us in the rapture, then he sets his feet down and he sets up his kingdom. That's right. So this is a very telling chapter. That is. Very telling chapter. And so these numbers prove, absolutely prove, and this chapter absolutely proves just like that okay. rabbi was afraid of <laughs> that uh, that he is Ben David. He wow. is, the promise is to him, the uh, covenant is to him. Yes. He's the one who will set up his kingdom. He's yeah. the one on the throne. Yes. Now, uh, more in Matthew, uh, Matthew 2, 1, Matthew, Matthew goes on. He, he, first he says, and you're supposed to, he's told, uh, uh, they, they are told, Mary is told, and, and Joseph are told to name him Yeshua. Well, we know from the Old Testament that means salvation. Mm -hmm. And so Yeshua, his name is, he said, name him Yeshua because he's going to do what? Save. Save. Mm -hmm. He is the salvation. So then Matthew 2, 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now, Micah chapter 2, chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, tell us that he's going to be born in Bethlehem, which is Bet, house, Lechem, bread, the mm -hmm. house of bread. And he is the living bread. Yes. He is born. There are so many things about this that we don't, uh, we're not really able to go <gasps> into right now. We don't have all the time mm -hmm. that we need. Matthew was very, very faithful to say, here's what happened. And he goes right to the kings. Now, he, he skips right to the kings. <laughs> Why? Because he's emphasizing in the book of Matthew, Jesus is the king. Yes. And so he goes right to that. And he says, now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews. For we've seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Why did they see his star? Jeremiah 39, 3, 13. When Daniel and the three Hebrew children were carried off, there was an earlier, earlier taking out of people, the brightest ones, mm -hmm. by Babylon. Mm -hmm. They chose the most promising leaders, mm -hmm. the most promising young people. And Daniel was in it, and the three Hebrew children were in it. And they were taken, and it, it said certain officers came with Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. or came down as his representatives to take them away. And among them, Jeremiah 39, 3 and 13, you're going to find one of them held the office of Rab Mag. Rab Mag. R A B M A G, probably Rab Mag. But Mag, M A G, is Mag Magi. Oh. So there was one who was the head of the Magi. Now, when Daniel interpreted the dream for Nebuchadnezzar, it says in the book of Daniel, he was promoted to Rab Mag. Uh -huh. He became the head of the Magi. And so he, as head of the Magi, yes. 
and he was teaching the astronomy. Oh, Babylon was very high in astronomy, astronomy not just astrology, right. astronomy. We have 60 second minutes and 60 minute hours because of the Babylon 60 system. Brilliant. So Daniel would have taught to those magi, there's coming a star. <laughs> He's going to have a star. And mm -hmm. this was from the prophecies of the Old Testament. And mm -hmm. it's going to rise. And that's going to be the king. It's the star of the king. Absolutely. And so they were searching. They were so sure of it. They were sure. The king mm -hmm. of the Jews has been born. Mm -hmm. Shelley and I will be right back. What does the word shalom mean? Its root word shalem means complete, whole. Dr. Brim's study of the Hebrew language has equipped her to explore the deep meaning of the Hebrew scriptures and led to writing this mini book and others. In this seven mini book package, you will receive the following for $15. Order today by calling 1-800-972-3447 or online at billybrim.org. Next time, I think, we'll get to the word shalom. Oh, it's so full of meaning. But I have a whole little mini book here, and it's packed with information and light on that Hebrew word shalom. And we're sending to you seven of our mini books for $15, and we'll pay the shipping. You will be blessed. How to rightly divide the word. The authority of the believer, the hearing heart, Judgment of the nations, God's promises to Israel of the land, Jerusalem, heavenly and earthly. So you'll want to take advantage of that. And we do want to make sure that you're with us next week. Oh, Shelley, I don't know how far we're going to get, but there's so much Hebrew light thrown on the scriptures. You want some light from the Greek? Watch Rick Renner. Yes. And so praise the Lord. Shalom, shalom, and you'll know what that means better when you get this packet. In 1980, while Billy Brim was peeling potatoes in her Collinsville kitchen, she received a mandate from the Spirit about moving into full-time ministry, and thus, Billy Brim Ministries was formed. Dr. Brim's ministry centers around prayer, Hebrew, the nation of Israel, and Bible prophecy. It is through the generous giving of her partners that have caused this international ministry to fulfill its assignment for over 30 years. If you are not currently a partner with this ministry, we ask that you prayerfully consider joining us through a monthly seed amount. Call today at 1-800-972-3447. Just as God led Paul and his team to Macedonia to gain fellowship with the Church of Philippi, we believe that God has led us into fellowship with you. We invite you to join us in a monthly partnership with the Billy Brim Ministries General Club by visiting billybrim.org or by texting your gift to BBM space amount to 28950 and follow the prompts. 